Jesus. Let's stand all over the sanctuary. We're here to praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God because God is good and his mercy endures what? Forever. Amen. Glory, glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. From the rising of the sun, oh, to the going down the same. Lord, you're worthy of the praise. Oh, I'm going to praise you all my day. Yeah. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Oh, Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. From the rising of the sun. Thank you, Lord. Until the sun is going down. Well, I'm going to praise you all my days. Thank you, Lord, always. Lord, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is the privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Oh, we glorify you and we lift you up. Serving you, oh Lord, is a privilege. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm going to lift you up. I'll praise him, I'll praise him, I'll praise him, I'll praise him all day long. Yeah, I'm going to lift you up. Glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy, Jesus. I'm going to lift him up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up. He's worthy. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up all the time. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up. Hallelujah. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Jesus. Oh, and hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give him the glory. And that song says, glory, honor, mighty, power, worthy Jesus. I'm going to lift you up. And we thank him as it says, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm going to lift him up. Oh, glory, honor, mighty power. Oh, worthy, worthy Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to lift him up. Oh, glory, honor. 
honor mighty oh mighty 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 power and worthy 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 Jesus and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lift him up hallelujah thank you Jesus you're worthy Lord nobody like you and we praise your holy name oh God now as we know we serve a good God and we want to give him what we need today we want to give it and put it there we want to take it and put it at the altar we're coming boldly to the throne today let's believe God as we have the word of prayer. Amen. Eloho, let's say amen. Mm, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you, Lord. Another day that you bless us. Have your way, oh God. Move by your spirit. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for your traveling grace as we travel up and Thank down you, the street, Jesus. Yes, highways. We honor you. We honor you. We bless honor us you. to come together one more time. We just want to thank you. Yes, Thanking Lord. you for all that you have done. Jesus. And all that you will do. Jesus. We just ask that you would move and move Lord in a Jesus. mighty way. Yes. Move by your Holy Spirit. Stretch out your mighty hands. Heal the living to set free. Those that are bound up and tangled up in sin. Seem to don't know no way, but you are the way, the truth, and life. No one can get to the Father except by you. Uh -huh. So we just thank you on today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Move and move, oh God. Oh God. Let us hear a word from you, oh God. We need a word. Whatever way we came this morning. That we may go back another way. Yes. Lifting you up. Lift praising you up. your name. Hallelujah. Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank Have you. Have your way, Lord. Thank you. Glorify thank your name, you. oh God. Thank you, Lord. Nobody can do us like you can. Uh, oh, yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh God, oh God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. And we're having our scripture reading by John Trey. Amen. Yes, 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 oh yes, yes, oh yes. I'll be reading from Psalms 5. Listen to my words, Lord, consider my lament, hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray, lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies, make your way straight before me, but let all who take refuge in you be glad, let them ever sing for joy, spread your protection over them, that those who love you, I mean, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Yes. Surely, Lord, you bless your righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Blessed are the hearers of his word. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm going to lift them up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm gonna lift them up. All right, let's praise the Lord. We thank God for the prayer and the reading of his word. We want to say to the Facebook viewers, we say, God bless you. Let's clap our hands as we're welcoming them this morning. 
Hallelujah. This is the Holy Way Church of God in Christ. Bishop Nowden is our pastor, the founder of this church. I am the co-pastor, Cecilia Nowden. Amen. Ella Holt, who did that prayer today, is our assistant. And we thank God for all of you that are here today. We're here because of Christ Jesus. And as I greet you this morning, this came to me as I heard it, and I just said, I really want to pass that on, what I was hearing about the enemy, how he likes to attack us. Just because the enemy attacks you doesn't mean you have to fall to his deceptions. Just because the enemy attacks you doesn't mean you have to lose your mind. Somebody has lost it. And just because the enemy attacks, it doesn't mean you have to live with the circumstances. Has the Lord made a way of escape for the righteous? Yes, he has. And who is the righteous? They are those who obey his word and are in harmony with his will. And God, God will cause you to live above your circumstances with victory. And the righteous, we can look to the hills, as David reminded us. He said, look up. You know, you don't see where the Bible is telling you to look down and, you know, feel sorry for yourself, have a pity party. But David said, I look up to the hills from which cometh my help. He said, my help cometh from the Lord. And then he went on to say, this is the same God. He had to put some power on it and let the devil know, now this is the same God that made the heaven and the earth. And when we do that, we know God will give us to be able to fly like an eagle. God needs us to fly above the polluted air. He needs us to fly above polluted people and what we call toxic situations and issues. And we need that today. So as I close here, the enemy, yes, will attack you. We got to get out of this thing saying, well, it's always something. It is going to always be something. Until we leave here, it's going to be something. And yes, there is a devil. And he's going to try and attack us. And if you notice, I said try. He's going to try us. But know this. The scripture said, no weapon formed against you, what? Shall prosper. And we praise God for that. We're saying, pass it on. Hallelujah. Tell somebody. Somebody's in trouble, but encourage them today. Let's clap our hands and praise God this morning, this morning. We praise the Lord, and we're so glad about him. I like to say, so glad you are here. Even on the prayer line, We, like I say, every once in a while, I like to remind folks we've been going on 21 years. And you know what? I realize, I tell those, those prayer partners, I say, I'm so glad you are here. We got to encourage one another. Glad you're here, so we praise the Lord. As I'm going to sing just a little bit of this song, the next voice you will hear is our bishop. We're asking that you will pray for him because I believe God has a word for all of us, what? Individually. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's words, it sounds like music in my, in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, oh, how I, I love Jesus. And oh, how I, I love Jesus, and oh, 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 how, how I love Jesus, 
for another day that you have blessed us and brought us uh, this place at this time that you have kept us in the land of the living. Gracious Father, we pray now that you will send a word a word of healing a word of salvation 
lips and a word of deliverance for those that are bound and those that are need to be free. We pray for freedom, even in a spirit and a mind. <clears throat> Bless us again. And we just said thank you this morning. Thank you for so much and so such a loving kindness that you have dispatched to all of us. We come now to worship you and to honor you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Thank you. We bless the Lord for all of his goodness again and each of you. So good to be in the house of the Lord. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. And a lot of people, there are a lot of places. But we are here to give God glory give God honor and to be in the house of the Lord. It's just so good to, uh, to see you and to be around you. The Bible teaches us that our inheritance is among those that are sanctified. Yes. Amen. Do you know the people that you're around affects your life? You happen to know that. They have a great influence on your life. You know, if you ever notice in the court when uh, the lawyer want to get his point over. He know he's not supposed to say that. They know that they, the lawyer's not supposed to present that evidence or whatever he's supposed to say. And he'll throw it rattling off. And the other lawyer say, you ought to object. You ought to object. And he just keep on, blah, 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 just keep going. And, yeah, and the, the judge had to tell you, I told you, I, I, he said, I, I, I object to that. And then he, tell the, he turned around and tell the jury, said, Disregard everything that you heard, y'all. But you know what? He still got his point over. See, he still was able to say it. How the jury gonna not hear what they said? Like he, like you know, cut his ear and all. They didn't heard it now, <laughs> you know. And that's all that an attorney wanted to do is for them to hear. He don't care about the judge telling them uh, disregard it because they gonna do what they want to do anyway. They, you know, what do you mean disregard it? They didn't heard it. They didn't heard it say he was a snake. Now all they see in their mind now that he crawling on his belly. You know, he, he crawling. Yeah, that's all they, they. He didn't get his point over. That's the psychology of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, so who you around? Thing that you hear? What people say? Have the way of affecting your life. That's why the Bible teaches our little son tell us not to be in a, a council. Don't be around the council of the ungodly. Because just as sure as you spend enough time around them, they're going to have some influence on your life. You know what I mean? What they say going gonna to happen. Amen. Good. Thank God for all our viewers over the years. The last two years we have you that have been on the Facebook and the live stream watching us and Amen. being a part of our Sunday morning worship. Love you. Thank God for you. Amen. Praise God for you. Holy Way members that have been coming out, thank you and God bless you. Amen. Appreciate you. And since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, happy Valentine to all of you. Amen. Amen. Happy Valentine, you know what I mean? Uh, my wife reminded me, you know, that's Valentine's Day. When is it? You know, tomorrow, she said, the next day or something. She, I guess she tried to get a, get, get, get a point over or something. You know, you know what I mean? Because she done told me two or three times, you know, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> nah. right. But happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Amen. Love you. Amen. Appreciate you. Be do. You know, it's, it's amazing. We, we live a lifetime uh, just trying to work hard. Good to see Jose there. We work hard and we, we go to work. And, uh, and sometimes even after retirement age, 
You, you don't see people up in their 70s, 80s, they still going to work, you know what I mean? We work until the, the day is done, until the last day, we work the last day. And when we get through there, still they got nothing to be account for. We empty, we, we still empty. So why am I saying that? Do, you know, why you're living and why you're in good health, be good to yourself. You know what I mean? You know, I tease y'all sometimes about those, you know, getting all that money and you know, spending that money in your hair, you know, and all that. Y'all you, y'all know me by now, you know what I mean? But I mean, keep on keep on doing something for yourself. If you need some hair, go get you some. I was thinking about buying me some. Because if you don't, if you don't, when you leave here, you know, you go and buy you some more wigs. You don't. If you save all that money, those kids and family are going to get it, and they're going to throw it away overnight. That's right. That's right. You ain't so you go ahead on and get you a, a red wig, a blue wig, a green wig, whatever make you happy. Look good. So I'm going to go get me some money if I can look good for Cecilia, you know. That's right. Amen. Spend something on yourself and look good, you know what I mean? All I ask you to do, take care of your church, too. Yes, and do something, do something, do something good for yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, you know. I, mean, I know I'm on Facebook there, and, and, and they probably look at it. My sister, you know, she always gonna call me and say, well, what you, Maureen, hi, Maureen, how you doing? She gonna, she gonna get on me if I say the wrong thing. <laughs> Go ahead and look good, Maureen. Put, you know, fix, fix up. Spend some money on yourself. Amen. Amen. How many love the Lord today? Amen. We're praying for those that have lost loved ones. We just keep you in prayer. Praying for my sister. I have a sister, Dorothy, and she's in rehab. She had a a little accident, and uh, God is blessing her. We thank God for her healing. Amen. Still praying for um, my nephew family, uh, uh, Arnell family, and uh, the Arkin family that we had the memorial service on the other day. We're just praying for those that have lost love. We're praying for uh, uh, one of my superintendents, uh, 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 Pastor Gray, uh, Lawrence Gray down in San Diego. He has got to go to the doctor on some things that he shared with me. We're praying for him and his deliverance and his healing in his body. Praying for, uh, amen. I know I'm not going to get everybody, but some of those had called me and let me know. Uh, the Davis and the Mill family, Mother uh, Rosa Gray family member that has transpired and gone on to be with the Lord. We're praying for that family. Amen. Amen. Davis, yeah, the David, Mother Rosa Davis. Yeah, and her sister is, is Sister Tamia, yeah. We're praying for that family. Amen. That God will strengthen them. And other than that, that we know we are praying for them. We know that, amen, God is so good. And God is a deliverer. He's a healer. Amen. And when we get in trouble and we can't do it ourselves, the Lord is there for us. Thank you so much. Um, we are in St. Mark, the, the fourth chapter. Y'all turn your Bible to St. Mark, okay? Fourth chapter. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have been all right, four chapter of St. Mark verses thirty five. I'm going to read, okay, thought it verses thirty five. Uh, I'm going to read a few verses there. Uh, 
Bowen. Yeah. Bowen 35. Okay. In the same day, I'm reading, throwing that verse 35. The same day when uh, the evening would come, he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking to his uh, disciples here. He said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Y'all with me, right? And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There was also with him other little ships. As they arose a great storm, a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, do you care about us? He said, care is thou not that we perish. Do we care about us? We we are perished. The storm is raging. It looks like the ship going to sink and you down there sleep. Do you care about us? One reason they asked him, they, they had seen him work many miracles before already. And they felt that, well, all these other miracles that you have been working, what about right now, I need one? You know, it's a funny thing that when, when we really need a, a miracle right now, we really forget about all the other ones he done did for us last year, six months ago. You only concerned about right now, what I need right now. Because talking about what he did last week ain't going to help you right now, am I right? You need some help right now, he said. As we come into the world, we learn many life experiences, see, you know. We learn. We as we born into the world and as we grow, the, the growth and the things that we encounter, the things that we see, the life experience that we become involved in, uh, it prepares us for the life that we live in this world, things that we encounter every day. It's constantly preparing us for the challenges that we will face. So if there's something that you're going through now, it's really not about right now, but it's getting you ready for tomorrow. Amen. Let me try to rephrase that again. Yeah. The things that you encounter now, whether they can be good or bad, you know, it prepare you for tomorrow. Let, let me talk about me for a minute. Y'all, um, I've been going to school. Y'all know that? And, uh, you know, years ago when I was going to school as a kid, you know, that probably prepared me. And uh, I didn't take typing and computer. You know, I didn't have the opportunity to do that when I was going to school. These kids now, they just like born with that stuff, man. They can do it. And I mean, I'm having that challenge in my life, Sister Regina, in that, with that computer. I'm learning word like <laughs> cut and paste. And I'm learning word about like, the bar, what you call the bar, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, you, you got it. I'm learning stuff like that. And, and drag this and, you know, double strings and left click, right click. You know what I mean? Menu and menu and serve. It was menu, I mean, they thought talking about the menu over here. Man, I was like, they order me a burger or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> menu and, you know, and. And then uh, that's the menu, and this here is the serve it, I mean, the order. That's the way I remember right click, left click. One click is the menu, the other click is the order. Excuse me. 
I said, hey, look at the menu and find it. I want to select my burger, you know what I mean? That's what I know of. So all of this is, and, 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 and my wife said, that's preparing you so you can do this stuff. Preparing you and getting you ready. So sometimes, you know, it can it get, get confusing with me. And, you know, the little teacher, she just be just really just teaching. She's terrific, too. And I just get so turned on because like, half the time my earplane ain't working right, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And then I just, I just turn it off and just sit there, you know what I mean? Because I mean, like, I'm trying to, I can't keep up with all this stuff, you know what I mean? Going. But if I hang in there, so see you, Brian, they're going to prepare you so you'll be able to do this, yeah. get me ready. So I thought I'd just share that to you because I'm having the ball of my life, you know, in my, in my class, you know. That. Yeah, we, of course, I'm the oldest thing in there and the slowest thing in there, but man, I, I'm having the ball of my life. <laughs> and and, and sometimes we are going through some things right now to get us ready for tomorrow. So if we can bring that into our Christian life. Yeah, I know you are hurting now. I know that somebody doing you wrong right now. I know that you're going through some rough time right now. But I tell you, if you just hang in there, God's going to bring you out after a while. Because what he's doing, he's getting you ready. He's getting you ready for tomorrow. See, if, 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 and I don't believe it had nothing to do with age. I believe if I just really hang in there and really just keep on and on and on and just keep on giving my best, one day you're going to walk him in the office and you're going to say, fishing out on something. Yeah. <laughs> and I ain't going to be, I won't have to look at my keyboard. I'm just going to go. What do you say? What do you say? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, Melinda. Yeah, go ahead, copy on. Right. Go ahead, Melinda. Yeah, they tell Melinda, Se Secretary Melinda, go run that off. <laughs> but, but see, it, it, I can dream that all day, but I got to apply myself. I got to go through something. See, we always want the mountaintop, and we always want the best, but we don't want to go through. You got to go through something. So as we could, this world, many of our experience preparing us for the life challenges that, you know, our education and job training, et cetera, and it prepares us for what God is getting ready for us for tomorrow. No matter how equipped that you become in the natural, it will not equip you for spiritual warfare. Are y'all with me? So therefore, you still got to go through some spiritual warfare to be able to do spiritual battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I can get equipped on that computer, but it ain't going to help me in the spiritual warfare neither. Yeah. I got to be able to go through some things spiritual wise. I got to let God take me to some things so I'll be able to handle the spiritual warfare that's going to come. Because you're either going through a storm, you're just coming out of the storm, or you in one right now. You're going to have to do some spiritual battle. Forget about, I'm saved now, the devil going to leave me alone. You forget about that. You saved now, you just getting ready to get a big devil chasing. You're going to be a bigger devil. Now that you saved, them little devils, they leaving you alone. The bigger devil coming out. He's waiting on you. Amen. amen. We're so thankful, amen, that we have a God and we serve a God. That's our assurance that will always be there and never leave us. When we know that and believe that, we can always rely on him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see, after we accomplish all in the natural, after we accomplish all in the natural, our degrees and finish our universities and, and uh, living in our dream home, and, and after we have prepared our naturally body and natural uh, lifestyle to accomplish all of this, and we get it, and you know what? We still find ourselves that we're not happy. We're not happy. There's a battle going on 
and all of your effort and all of your earthly endeavor, the battle is too big for you. There's some things that only the spiritual man going to be able to satisfy you because you are a spiritual being into a natural body. God created you and breathed the breath of life in you. The breath that you breathe, that comes from God. Breathe the breath of life in you and say, live. And he, without the breath, you were just laying there. Adam was just laying there without the breath. He created him, and then the Lord went to lunch and we took a break, and Adam was still laying there. He created Adam, and, and I'm using my imagination here, created Adam, and then he said, okay, I got man created. He got every part of his body that he need. And he said, what you going to do now? He said, I'm going to take a break. I'm going on vacation. And he caught a plane and came back, and it was, what happened to Adam? He's still laying there. Why he laying there? I ain't breathing the breath of life in him yet. And then he said, he breathed the breath of life in him. And when he breathed the breath of life in him, he became a living soul. So man is created by God. He belonged to God. Man, God creation is the Lord. And without God, now, this is the part that we're living up to now. Without God, when we eliminate God out of our life and put all our focus on the natural, we still just laying there empty. Oh, yeah. Without God, we are nothing. We can do nothing without God. That's why man struggle. He struggle in the materialistic thing, the life that we live in this world will not satisfy us. It would not bring peace of mind to us. Oh, Jesus. Jesus called him 12, and he knew they could not do what he really wanted them to do when he called them. And they were not ready. He called them, but they were not ready. People talking about the Lord called me, and, and, and I'm ready. He called, he called you. Yes, yes, I agree with that. He called you, but he didn't call you because you was already ready. He called you because he want to get you ready. Y'all get that? You ever call your children, you got to go somewhere, and you call the children and say, and you call them by name and say, Shirley, Mary, Bob. You call them. We got to go. And they still laying there asleep. You didn't call them because they was already ready. You called them because now you're telling them you got to get ready. Just because the Lord called you does not mean that you are ready already. Man, you can't, you can't keep doing, you can't keep doing the same thing that you were doing before in the process of getting ready. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 18, Jesus said to Peter and Andrew and that they were, they were fishing. And he said to them, now you, I'm paraphrasing, you can read that, you know, that's the fourth chapter of Matthew, verse 18. He called to Peter and Andrew, he, and, and I'm just going to put that in my, uh, paraphrase it in my way I want to say it. He said to them, he said, now I call you. Hey, Peter! And Andrew, I, now I'm, I call y'all. Now, what, what, do you, what do you want? I want you to stop fishing and follow me. That's what it boils down to. You stop doing what you're doing and follow me. See, people want to say that the Lord called them and they want to keep doing the same thing that they've been doing all the time. Going the same place that they've been going the same time. Hanging out with the same negative people they've been hanging out with the, all the time. Doing the same thing. If the Lord call you, you ought to get up and follow him so he can get you ready for the work that he called you to do. 
He told the disciple, I called you, now I want you to follow me for three and a half years so you can then do the what that I call you to do. You are learning now so I can send you to do the work. I didn't call you to go do it right now, but follow me and watch me and obey me and listen to me. Amen. And, and, and look how I heal the folks and look how I love the folks and look how I treat the folks. And, and, and you watch me and then you can do what I call you to do. You know, people don't, People don't, people don't really come to your church because of how good you can preach. Uh, whether the preacher is a, is, a, is, is a great preacher or not. You know why people really come to your church? They come to the church because they're looking for a place that they see love. If you stop acting funny with folks, it plays to pack it out, wall to wall. You know what I mean? What they say, act like you stuck up or something. You are stuck up. And you stop acting funny and just start loving people. And, and when people fall, come in, they know that you love them. You know, you, you, preacher might not even can, can preach that. He might be up there. <laughs> He's stuttering. He can't even say Jesus to them. But if a whole lot of love there, they'll look beyond all of that. <laughs> Amen. He, he might get the preacher, he might get the preacher and say, and I saw, I saw Jane walking on water. They got it all mixed up. They'll look over that and see all that love there. They, 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 they might say, Rev, show sure can't preach. But he sure got a church full of love. I'm going to that loving church. Tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell them, say, I got some love to show this morning. Come on, tell them, say, I got some love I want to show this morning. I saw Kendra, I saw Kendra early part of the morning. You know, you know, you know, Kendra can kind of look a little sad sometimes. Looking to the side, kind of head hanging down. Look at her, look at her, killing the side. I saw this morning. I went over and told Kim I said, come here. I know, I know we practice social distancing and all that. I said, but you like you need a hug. She, you, you, okay. <laughs> she knew, she knew how to help. I said, come here, let me I said, let the pastor give you a hug, you know what I mean? You like you need a hug, you know what I mean? You know, little that. She had a mask on and everything, but I know she was smiling up on that mask. <laughs> We ought we we to learn how to just, just dispatch some love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It, 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 it's a love. Love will change everything. It'll, it'll change the way you treat people. It'll change the way you uh, act around folks. It'll, love will change the way folks treat you. And somebody got a hold of it and said, Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Woo! Whoa, 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 what did he I, I can see a guy say, I, I, I need to be loved, and I, and I went and got some Johnny Walker, and that didn't help me. I went and got some marijuana and that didn't help me. I, I, I went and looked out in the bar room and found me a girlfriend. That didn't help me. And then he tried so many things. I bought a new house and that didn't help me. I bought some new clothes and that didn't help me. And then once around he found out that he needed love and the Lord said, God so loved the world. And Jesus said, I love you. And then he, 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 he made the song say, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Woo. Man, I should have wrote I should I should have I should have cut a record, shouldn't I? Man, I feel like I can sing now. Woo! Love lifted me. Love lifted me. With nothing here could help. Love lifted me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Matthew 
The fifth chapter of Matthew, is, we can read that later. It teaches you that you are going to represent me. He said, it taught him how to be blessed. How to be blessed. What is it? In other words, he said that to get to heaven. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. They shall be able to see God. Am I right about that? I know my wife like to be attitude. She's 30 old to that. And then it said, if you want to be comfort, blessed are they that mourn. And, and then if you want to have an inheritance, blessed are the meek. They should inherit. You, you, you trying to get your inheritance, and I mean, you just as proud as you can be. You not meek. You not humble. Blessed are the hungry and thirst for righteousness. You shall be filled. People are hungry and thirsty. They are, they are hungry, but they are hungry for the wrong thing. And that's why they are never filled. Are you with me? That's why they are empty. They want the wrong thing. The thing that they are in taking is not filling them. You got to find out what is it that fills man's spirit. You got to find out what is it that makes man satisfied. And then if he takes the thing that makes him satisfied, he shall be filled. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes me and my wife, we go to eat, and she go like, what you want to eat? I say, I don't know. I'm hungry, but I don't know what I want. That's what we are spiritual-wise sometimes. We don't know. And I said, then she then in the place said, I said, I said, you the, you, the, you the wife, why don't you just pick it out? I mean, when I was a, I, and, and I go back in the old school, when I was a kid, my mother never asked us what we wanted to eat. We just eat and we just go to the table and eat. That's right. I just take charge of that and fix it. And I said, whatever you fix, I'm going to eat it. And she go to, she throw a name off the restaurant. We got this one, we got that one. That, one. that ain't helping me. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to just say, I don't want to, I don't want to know the name. Don't give me no name. And I just want to eat. And then, and, and I'm satisfied. You just do it. You can't, you can't, you can't, it's hard to satisfy. And I know you all going to agree with me on that. It's hard to satisfy a person when they don't know what they want. <laughs> Am I right? You be there all day trying to figure out what you want, what you want. And I don't want this, I don't want this. So we thought I'd make it easy. I just tell her what I don't want now. I said, you know I don't want that, I want that, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. And then you, you, get, you can work with that. You know what I don't want. But now you can work with whatever you want to work with. You got to know, you got to know, you got to know that I'm hungry for more of God. I am hungry. There's an emptiness in my life, and there's an emptiness there. There's something in my life that people can't fulfill. My wife can't fulfill it. Her husband can't fulfill it. Amen. There's something there that the store, I can shop all day, and that won't fulfill it. You got to know that the thing that I can go and do whatever, I can drink the best liquor, I can drink the best drugs, whatever out there, I can go to the best doctor, it's not going to fulfill it. When I get through, I'm going to still be empty. I am hungry. I realize that I need more of God. There's a hungry, there's an emptiness there that only God can fulfill. Look at that, Pastor. Read that in, 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 in Matthew, the field chapter. Blessed are the hungry. They're hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Hungry for, I, I'm hungry because I, I want to do the right thing. I'm hungry because I want to love folks. I'm hungry because I want to treat folks right. I'm hungry for righteousness and they shall be filled. Mm. 
Jesus called them. And then they had to be taught. Talking about his disciples, he called them and he taught them. And in their training, they witnessed miracles. And in their training, they seen blind eyes being opened. In their training following Jesus, they seen to sit being healed. As they followed Jesus and watched him, and, and they seen devils being cast out of people that were possessed. Then in their training, as they follow him, they see dead bodies that were dead, lifeless, see the dead rise. They seen all of this, walking with Jesus. But I just seen it, yet they were not ready. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What, what are you saying? Watching other folk don't get you ready. You know, seeing it, you got folk in the church all their life. And, so, and, and you know what get me? Stretch it. People that grew up in the church all their life, they don't seen it so much. They, they don't even believe it no more themselves. They've been, <laughs> they been in the church all their life. They don't saw old folk get saved. I know that. I know that. And then they get up and get grown. Then they pull away from it. That's sad, isn't it? They don't see what God did. They don't see how your, you don't see how your mother prayed when she was struggling and God worked miracles at. Seeing when you didn't have money, you, you, you don't see how that your mom and family didn't have money to take you to doctors like they could. They, they didn't have the health and plan, but all they did was had a big old rusty hand with some blessed oil on it and laid it on there and prayed for you and you got up and went to school the next day cast that flu and that cold out of you and, uh, and didn't even get a shot. You done seen God work miracle. You grew up and seen it and then you got grown and you got so grown that you said, I don't need this. And you out there hungry trying to get it and trying to buy it and standing in line trying to get it somewhere else and, and you can't even go to the doctor now unless you take a 30 minutes to get a parking place and then after you get 30 minutes to do the parking place you take another hour to get signed in and then they take your temperature and put you in another room and forget about you leave another room for two hours and man you be done died before they get to you I remember they took me to the doctor one time and put me in the room and they went through all that. I thought they were going to take, do something to me. And they took my temperature and, and they, they put, a, put a thing around my arm and checked the pressure and everything. Put me in a little room in there and forgot about me. They changed shift. I went to sleep and forgot about me. I was in there about four or five hours before they come back out. You need God. I don't know if you know it or not. I know our parents and the ancestors didn't have all the sophisticated stuff that we have now. But one thing they had going for them better than we got, they had God. They know where the help coming from. I look to the hill from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord when nothing else would work. I prayed and God made a way for us. They had that going for them. So even though that they had seen the miracles and the blind eyes opened, the devil cast out and the dead raised, they had followed Jesus, they seen all of this, but they still needed to be ready. They had to be placed where God can totally trust them. You totally trust them. In the text, the Gospel of Mark, they was on a boat, and they encountered a storm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And the reason God allowed them to encounter the storm so they can get ready, help them get ready. Your storm, point your head at yourself and say, my storm. Your storm ain't about you. It's to get you ready so God can use you. Anybody here ever went through a storm? Uh, maybe you're going through none now. 
Well, you say, I ain't never went through one. I'm not going through one now. But I, I'm not in the one now, but you wait till tomorrow. You will come. Thank you, Jesus. So God still had to allow them because they don't really go through anything to get them ready to have their own testimony and their own conviction. Oh, they're going to talk about what the master did. The master did. Oh, yeah, we saw that master do this here. He, we saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. And we saw him calm the water. We, we, we saw him open blind eyes. But whatever you have learned, that's what's wrong now with so many of our young people now that them saw what God can do, but they ain't never let God do anything for them. They rolled off of what God did for their mama. I remember as a youngster, I came to California, and, uh, and uh, I, I told y'all many times, I left Arkansas because I was running from the church. I didn't want nothing to do with no, no sanctified church because all they wanted to do was just stay all day in, in, in the name of the church, which you can't do, church of God in Christ. And that's what I thought all of them were. You can't do. You can't do this here. You can't do this here. You can't do this here. I said, man, when I get away from I get away from my Arkansas, we end up under my mother's house. I ain't never going to check God in Christ again. That's what I said. True. Sure. I went over to this old lady house. Sister, sister, mother Billy know her. Name of mother Hattie Williams. And she had a nerve enough to have the same first name my mother, too. Hattie Williams. So I'm going over there, you know, with, with, with the saints. You know, I'm just kind of in the background, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like being cool, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm driving folks around in my little first car, you know what I mean? So, you know, that'll keep me, you know, keep me. I appease the people, you know, I drive and stay, stay in the background. And we take these folks over there to get saved. And she don't say nothing to the one we brought over there. And she's going to get right up in my face. Do you know the Lord? You know, back in that day, you know, I had my flat top, my little bangs up in the front. I said, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run my, I'm gonna run my, my gang on. I said, well, you know, my mother's saved and my mother, my mother sanctified. You know, oh boy, I had it down. I said, my mama, you know, she, she, uh, she, she got a relationship with God and she saved and sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost. I Man, she got up in my face like it. I ain't talking about your mom. I'm talking about you. Do you know the Lord? <laughs> Woo! I said, and then I didn't know what to say. I said, I, 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 my mama, I, 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 I want to know about you. Do you know God? Do you know the Lord? So she made me say, no, I didn't. She kept on until I said no. Now, all these folks that we done brought over there, we done went out and got some drunks off the street and brought over there to get saved. And I am not even a drunk, and she met it with me. So she takes me and says, well, get on your knee. I have not got in the house good. And she got on, she said, she's on your knee. She, and she started singing, let Jesus fix it for you. I can hear a voice now. For he knows just what to do. So whenever you pray, let him have his own way. And you, somewhere in that song, somewhere in that song, she laid hands on me and I started speaking in tongues. I know she was playing that, have a, I don't think they had no carpet, hardwood floor back then, the lotion, whatever. She probably was playing the mop it the next day, but I cleaned that floor all over. I roll, I roll, I clean. That was some. Thank you, Jesus. What, Jesus? You got to know him for yourself. Jesus wanted the disciples to experience a storm for themselves so they would know. Yes, yes, they see Jesus work miracles, but he wanted to teach them something 
that will move them to greater things. They will move them to a faith that, yes, I saw that masterwork miracle, but now I am a miracle. I know what God can do for me. Solomon said in Proverbs 3 and 5, said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Jesus is saying to them, trust me. He said, let's go to the other side. Told the disciples, said, let's go, let's go over. 35th verse in the text that I read, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Uh -huh. There's a storm. I can hear the, the disciples now, and, and, and this ain't in the Bible what I'm saying right now, but I'm using my imagination. I can hear the disciples say, you're talking about catching a boat to the other side? Yeah. He said, but Channel 7 says a storm going to be coming up. <clears throat> and I heard, I heard the news the other day, and another one said, yeah, I read it in the paper that the weather's not going to be good. You're going to encounter the storm. The weatherman said that it's not going to be good to get out on the water because a storm is coming. But, but I can hear Jesus saying that, 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 that I know what the weatherman said. But Jesus said, what did I say? Oh, Lord. Good Lord. Jesus said, what did I say? Oh, uh, uh, your friend said, it ain't going to work. But Jesus said, what did I say? The doctor said, you're sick and ain't going to get well. But Jesus said, what did I say? What did I say? Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And I've come to tell you this morning, if Jesus said, let's go to the other side, you might as well get ready. It doesn't matter about the storm. It doesn't matter about the sunshine. It doesn't matter about the wind blowing. Say yeah, the wind may blow, the midnight may come. But if Jesus said we are going to the other side, you might as well get ready. Say yeah! Get ready! Woo. Oh, thank you. Sometimes we lose our blessings because we listen to what other folks say. But you got to remember what Jesus said. If Jesus said he's going to do it, get ready. It's going to come to pass. Don't listen to nobody. Don't sit in the council of the ungodly. Don't sit in the council of those that want to take your dream away and take away your anointing. Because if Jesus said it, get ready. It's coming to pass. Say yeah! Say yeah! Woo! Hey! What glory! Sometimes we miss out. We miss out on what God has blessed us with because we listen to what other folks are telling us. Rather than then focus with the word of God and we lose hope because of the storm. Just because you're in the midst of a storm, it doesn't mean that God has left you alone. It doesn't mean that he's not there. But he got the storm in his hand. The storm belonged to him. Oh, glory. He's just trying to get you to trust him and to stay with him in the midst of your storm. I want you to know this morning that I know you are going through some very difficult time. 
but God said it. I'm going to bring you out. And if God said I'm going to bring you out, you ought to throw a walking. Say yeah. Stand up. And act like you're coming out. Say yeah. I'm coming out of this. Oh, Lord. Hey, glory. in the storm because the storm not going to last always and when you come out of it you're going to be better you want to get better stay in the storm he got the storm in his hand he know what he's doing in the midst of it I'm in the storm but remember remember your blessing, your blessing, can you remember this? Your blessing, Sister Melody, Mother Melody, your blessing is on the other side. I say your blessing is on the other side. But you got to go through the storm to get, to get, to the other side. You can't lay here on this side talking about sin on the blessing. Sin it over here. No! Get up! Go to the other side. And, and I know I'm going to get there. I know I'm going to get there because Jesus said. He didn't say I'm sending you to the other side. He said let us go to the other side. So that let me know that in the midst of the storm, where is he? He's with me. Oh, yeah. Read that scripture. He said, let us go to the other side. In the midst of the storm, he's with you in the storm. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He on the boat. Jesus taking a nap. Wake him up. You might have to wake him in the morning. Wake him up. Wake him up. Get up. Wake him up. I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you right now. I need a healing right now. I need a deliverance right now. I need a blessing right now. Wake him up. Woo! My body right now. If, if, if I was about five years younger, I'll preach that. 
decision that watching and saying I really want to change my life and it's so simple all we have to just know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and you know just believe on Jesus but you know when you come short now you need to believe that Jesus died for you he rose amen he came up with all victory all power in his hand Standing in heaven and earth, and he's mighty to say what? To save us from our sins and that we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. What? That he is Christ. Amen. Ask the Lord for forgiveness of your sins. The Lord will come in your heart. He wants to bless you. Just confess it today and say, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to live here. I'm tired of the way I'm living. And Lord, you have a better way from, for me. This day forward, you be my Lord. You be my Savior. You be my God. And we just praise God for it. If you said that, Jesus is living right here. Amen. I say, explore the word. Pray. God will begin to build the growth up in you. And let's just praise God. I believe someone went through it. Hallelujah. And we thank God for the word on today. We're saying to those of you that are watching, if you desire to share with us a gift, an offering, we ask that you would do that at this time. And I believe God's going to bless you. And we thank you so much. Amen. And so it was just good to dwell with you. And we believe God had a word for you on today. And until the next time, we always say be thankful and be kind. Amen. And be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.